Um, what about Sterling? We just saw him in, in that little analysis of the penalty shout. I mean, he's one of the senior players now, Michael Dubery. He's one of the leaders, effectively, for this City side. He's been there a while. He's scored plenty of goals. I mean, how crucial is he going to be for Pep Guardiola, not just in the Premier League, but in all competitions? Now they've lost David Silva and Leroy Sané in the summer, if you can call it that, transfer window. I just think it's important he stays fit. With all the, the striking players that are out, it's important he stays fit. I think he's obviously one of the leaders that um, leads by his performance with his performance. I thought he'd done really well today. And I think, you know, I, I heard a stat that he's one of four players that have played over 200 games for Pep, which is, uh, you know, for Pep to pick you 200 times, you know, you're, you're doing the right thing. Um, so I think he's very important um, in this team. Um, how he how he plays, what he does, the goals he gets, and with the people that are out, it's important he stays fit. He stays fit and healthy, and he's on the pitch, and that will be a massive factor um, for Man City going forward. Yourself, Gary, your your take on oh. Sterling and the importance of his role more than ever now. Oh, absolutely crucial for Manchester City. For me, he's a leader both on and off the field of play. Um, I think he's a great example in both those areas as well. Um, and, you know, from a, a player who, in his early days at Manchester City, there were lots of people questioning him with regards to his decision-making, his delivery of the ball into the box, his finishing or inability to finish. Um, he's basically proved absolutely all of the doubters wrong um, and he is at the very pinnacle of his career. Um, you know, whether he's providing chances, whether he's scoring opportunities, um, whether he's leading by example, as I say, on and off the park. Um, he is absolutely crucial for Manchester City, especially at the moment with their two main strikers in Aguero and Jesus not being available. As we take a look at his goal, which gave Manchester City the lead, Michael, I mean... We, we mentioned earlier about players defying expectations, going above your initial assessment of them. What about Sterling? When you first saw him, probably at Liverpool, I presume, and to the player he's become now, do you think he's sir, gone way beyond your expectations, surpassed it? Yes, at, at Liverpool, exciting player. Again, like most young players, his decision-making was, you know, not always the best. You know, he'd come with a lot of controversy when, you know, he moved to Man City. He'd come with a lot of hate. He'd come with a lot of, you know, negativity. And, you know, then Pep was there and it was like, well, are they going to get on? And i tell you what, what Pep's done for him in, in maturity, growth, his football IQ has grown, you know, he's an integral part of, like, one of the best teams in Premier League history. You know, for me, he's, he's absolutely surpassed it. And to, to be honest with you, how he conducts himself off the field as well has made him grown even more so. So for me, yes, he's, he's surpassed expectations. I always knew he was a good player, but how he now plays and how he affects games with and without the ball is, is brilliant. And that's down to Pep, but also it's down to Raheem wanting to, to do well, wanting to learn, wanting to take it on. And, you know, and maybe he, he plays with, you know, the chip on his shoulder that says, you know what? Yeah, prove me wrong, I'm proving you wrong. So... Uh, he's, he's very much so surpassed what I, I thought he'd do at Man City. Um, I'm Malaysian. I'm living here in Malaysia, so I'm more exposed to Malaysian media than British media. Gary's now in Thailand. Uh, but this may be a bit of a sensitive subject, but do you think that Sterling is handled a bit unfairly by the British media? Something he's spoken out before about this. I, I, I honestly believe he ha he, he's been... He gets harshly um, done by, you know... Everything he done gets turned into something negative. Um, everything he tries to do, they're trying to find something to use negatively. Um, performances on the pitch. You know, he, he at the start, his only wrong move was saying he wanted to leave Liverpool. And that was maybe badly handled by an agent. And then all of a sudden now it's uh, negative. And it's taken for him to speak out on matters bigger than football for people to really see that this guy is quite intelligent. He's quite human. And um, he deserves a little bit better. And, and to be fair, he's done a lot of talking with football and only recently done some talking outside. But yeah, I think he's harshly done 
by the media. And I think, you know, the media betrayal, as we all know, the media have a, a lot of power and a lot of say, but yeah, I think he's really, everything a lot about him is, is negative. So if you're reading some stuff about Raheem Sterling, you didn't know him, it'd be really negative, but you know, he's handled it very well. Gary, you're taking this, I know that you're not as exposed to British media right now. You've been in Thailand for this over half a decade. So, <laughs> so since uh, Sterling was at Liverpool, effectively, but mm. do you think he's treated a bit unfairly? Yeah. We, Adam, we've got internet here, mate. It's no problem. I can I read the English papers. It's OK. Um, yeah, listen, but you, you I get think, my drift. I think, I think the tide has turned completely for Raheem Sterling. Um, I think he was um, badly treated, harshly treated, unfairly treated in many areas of media. Um, I think in the last two or three years, yeah, last two years, certainly, um, that tide has completely turned because of some of his comments, some of his actions, the stance that he's taken on certain political points as well. Um, the fact that he's voiced an opinion that, that we've learned more about him. I actually think now, to a, a certain extent, he's almost become a, a darling of the media. Um, and I think that those who were... Uh, um, his detractors are now predominantly, if not totally, singing his praises, and rightly so. Do you think sometimes, Michael, it's better for footballers to, to be neutral on certain issues off the field because you become a lightning bolt? Or do you think there's an obligation because of the power of influence that they have that they should be speaking out about issues? It's a very fine balance, and the role of a footballer in society as a celebrity has certainly grown and grown since you were a player to what we have now. I think that um, social media has changed how uh, athletes, uh, Premier League players, uh, basketball players are seen. So it's hard to be neutral when you have social media where whatever you do, that's your stance. And, you know, unless you're, you, you don't come on a social media platform, um, but even then, everyone's pressing you for an opinion. That's the world we live in, you know, and, and it's just about the top athletes using their platform correctly. And that's all. It's, a, it's about being smart in how you use your platform. So you can have an opinion, but it's, it's how you use your, your platform to either influence others or, you know, to what you say about uh, incidents, and especially when you're getting into um, politics and social incidents, it's just how you use that platform uh, to maybe influence others. Okay.